Hello everyone, happy weekend. So in this short video, we'll be configuring LDAP on the Intex Kubernetes platform. This will allow users to actually log in to NKP using their username and password, which are configured in Active Directory. So let's get started. So over here, I've logged into NKP already. If we head over into Identity Providers, we see that there's no Identity Provider that has been configured yet. So what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, click on Add Identity Provider. And here we are presented with four different options. We can log in using GitHub. Uh, using LDAP, OIDC, or SAML. So in my lab environment, I'm using LDAP, so I'll just go ahead and search and select LDAP. Then, um, so there are, there's the drop down box for me to select which workspace do I want to associate this LDAP uh, identity provider to. So if I select all workspaces, any workspace that I have right now or created uh, in the future will be able to consume this LDAP identity provider. If I only select one, then this um, particular workspace will only have access to that particular LDAP identity provider. So I'm just going to select all workspaces and the name I'm going to give it a friendly name for my uh, for this particular identity provider. For the host, I am going to go over into my AD server and, and find the IP address which is here 10.168.100.5. I'll dump that in and put in the AD port. Then for the bind for the bind D, and this is essentially the service account that we'll be using to actually query Active Directory. So if we were to head over into Active Directory, I have got an NKP service account over here. How do we find the bind DN? Right, as uh as special specified over here. What we can do is we can click on view, advanced features, head back to the users uh, OU, right click NKP service, under properties, attribute editor, and we can find uh this thing called DN. DN is the long form. Uh, the long form of DM is called distinguished name. Right, so we can just double click on this, right click, copy, and paste it into the bind DN. Then we can key in the password of the service account. The next one is the root CA. So if we are using uh, LDAPS, so what we can do is we can, uh, we, what we will need to do is actually to upload the root CA over here so that you can actually validate that uh, it is um, coming from a trusted source. Uh, I'm not using any form of TLS over here, so I'm just going to leave this empty. I'm also going to set it as a insecure no SSL as well as insecure skip TLS verify. The next one is the user search uh, base DN, right? So this is essentially which OU do we want uh, NKP to actually search for user accounts. So uh, my user accounts are all going to be created inside users. Uh, this is not the best practice, of course, but this is a lab environment, so why not? So under properties, uh, attribute editor, let's look for distinguished name. We can just right click and copy. And this will allow us to paste it there. The next thing is uh, what's the user search uh, username. So essentially how do, how do we want to basically search for the users when we, the user type in their usernames, right? So uh, we can actually look at a sample user over here. So I've got Vincent, Vincent Sao, this is my personal account which I created. And I can look for the attribute editor and I can find something that, um, you know, I think will be the best that I can use to actually uh, allow my users to log in. So most of the time it's going to be SAM account name, right? So we can search for it over here, SAM account name. So essentially what happens is that whenever whenever anybody tries to log in, they need to use the SAM account name, right? So it's um, this attribute. So I'm just going to copy this attribute. Then the next one is the filter. If you want to filter, um, if you've got a lot of um, entities within Active Directory, how do we want to filter this? Um, this uh, um, how do I want to filter the, use, filter the users by any particular attributes? So for example, if we have got service accounts and we want to fill and we have got a specific uh, attribute that is set, we can actually filter to make sure that the service accounts are actually not uh, selected. So we will skip this one. I'm not even going to be using it. But if you are keen to use, we can actually go down to the uh, user account, object type, and you see there's a thing called object class. We can actually use this object class uh, to actually do the filter. So it will be very similar to what you see over here. Parentheses, object class equals to person. That will filter only uh, people. Then uh, user search scope, I want to search the entire tree. The next one is uh, what's the user search ID, right? So the user search uh, ID attribute essentially uh, is how do we map the name, right? The, the user entry to the name. So uh, most of the time we're going to use DN over here. And how do I want to map the user email address to a particular to the particular user that has logged in? 
So over here, um, if we do look at this thing called user principle name, it actually has got somewhat some somewhat similar to an to an email address. Uh, other accounts or other types of accounts might have this thing called mail. We can use that as well. But for me, I'm going to use user principle name. The next one is going to be the user search name. This essentially allows us to basically show the, the username at the top right hand corner. So I'm just going to select it as name. If we look at the attribute within my user account, there's actually a name, uh, name attribute as well. That's all. So the next thing that we want to do is we also want to configure groups, right? Because I mean, adding singular users into the identity provider or associating use individual users to maybe uh, roles and roles and groups or so rather roles is very very tedious so what we typically want to do is to use a group so this is how we configure the group uh, configuration so uh, the group search group search based DA is essentially where all my groups are sitting so I have uh, they are all going to be sitting over in the users container so what I can do is I can right click properties and search for the attribute editor and use this distinguished name Then the group search filter, right? So this for this one, we want to ensure that we use the object object class equals to group. So how do we know what's object class? We can actually go to the attribute editor um, for this particular uh, group account that I have. So it's NKP admins. I can go to attribute editor, search for objects, object class, and we see it's called group, right? So object class group. So what we can do is we can actually copy this in and just remove post six. Right, so this will allow us to filter as group. This is actually case sensitive, so we need to be to be sure of that. So over here is a small g. We need to ensure that here's here a small g as well. Then I'm going to search through entire tree. And the last one is how do we uh, get the get the name, the attribute of the group that represents its name. So if we go over to the group, we look for something that has got name. So we see that this thing is actually the attribute is called cn. Right, so we just put in. Uh, the search the search name will be called CN and uh, how do I match uh, users which are trying to log in to the group right so there is um, this thing called mem there is this thing called members right so inside the group there is a member uh, member attribute inside which it actually sh shows all the all the members that are inside right so I'm going to say uh, this is going to be member and the search uh, group search user attribute, if you see over here, this is essentially a distinguished name, DN over here. So what we do is we just type in DN. Okay. So once that is done, we can click on save. And now we have got an Active Directory uh, or LDAP provider already configured. Next thing that we need to do is we need to create groups, right? So essentially groups us, allows us to uh, map Active Directory uh, objects into uh, objects that NKP can recognize so that we can start to uh, provide access control to those groups identified. So we can click create a group. I'm going to call this NKP admins, right? And the active uh, identity provider groups. So this one is basically the group that I have over here, NKP admins. So I'm just going to create a, uh, a group. And it says that, you know, if you're using an external group from LDAP, uh, prefix the group with OIDC. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do OIDC colon. Um, NKP admins, right? Right, so uh, NKP admins, right? That looks good. Next thing is if I want to add individual users, right? I can actually add them over here. So I cannot say uh, administrator if I so want to, but I'm not going to do that because I want everything to be controlled by, by the group itself. So once that is done, I can click on save. And the last step would be to uh, to, to map this um, you know, identity provider groups to access control rules. So if we head over into access control, I see that there are a couple of default uh, cluster roles that has already been created. If I wanted, I could actually create my own custom role. So I'm just gonna call this NKP custom role. And I say, and there are two types of roles, right? The first one is a cluster role. So this allows us to in, uh, interact with the Kubernetes clusters. The other one is NKP role. And this allows us to uh, basically set the roles on uh, the on the management cluster as well as NKP UI. Um, just for this example, I'm not going to create anything, but I can just select a cluster role, and I can say add rule, and I want it to uh, you know 
what kind of um, permissions do I want to provide to the resources, right? So I can say maybe I want it for deployments and um, any of the optional names, what are the API groups and what are the, uh, what are the, 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 the actions that a person can create on, on it, right? I'm not going to create any rules, roles right now. I'm going to keep it uh, clean and simple until I require, um, required to do that. Then we can head over into cluster role bindings, right? So essentially a cluster role binding is how do we map the group that we created earlier over into the cluster roles. So we see that the group that we've already created uh, is recognized over here, NKP admins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add roles and I'm going to say, uh, what are some of the roles that I want to add, right? So I've got the cluster admin role as well as the DK, DKP commander admin role. Then I click on save, okay? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to test out. So my user account, it's, uh, is actually within the NKP admins, uh, NKP admins group. So if I will switch to an incognito window, you know, the key in the URL, I can see that I've got a login with wsk.local.ad. I click on that, I key in my username and my password, and voila, you see that we get logged into uh, the commander or NKP uh, control plane. All right, so this is this concludes the video. Uh, thank you for watching. I will be creating more videos, so stay tuned.